Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today, we are playing Dungeons & Dragons, the fantasy adventure board game. I have previously made a video talking about the rules for this game, so I'm not going to front load this video with rules. Instead, we're pretty much going to jump into it, but obviously I will talk through things as we go. So hopefully, even if you haven't seen the rules video, it will all make sense. In this adventure, we have four heroes facing off against a dungeon master. Our heroes are... Lidda the Halfling Rogue, who is armed with some balanced throwing daggers and a special amulet for opening treasure chests. She has the ability to find and disarm traps. We have Miali the Elven Wizard, who knows the spell Magic Missiles and has an Elven Shortbow that will restore spell points when she uses it. We have Jozan the Human Cleric, who has the healing ability and the ability to turn undead. He also has the spell Greater Restoration, which will restore a hero to life, and he has a crossbow that will help him to restore spent spell points. And then we have Regdar the Fighter, who is armed with a single-handed broadsword and gets to add one success to his close combat attacks. And today we are playing through the level 1 mission, the Goblin Bandits. Unease and darkness have fallen over the land of Rallion as monsters ravage the region. Travelling through it, the heroes have arrived at the village of Holbrook, on the edge of a forest where goblin attacks have left the villagers fearing for their lives. The sheriff of Holbrook has gone in search of them, but has not returned. The goblins must be the key to his disappearance. Your objective? Defeat all the goblins. So the Dungeon Master has set up the two boards for this particular map, but at the moment there is only one door on the board and that is where our heroes start. Doors, monsters, treasure chests and other scenic elements will appear as we move through the dungeon. Our heroes position themselves around the door and they have decided that Regdar, the mighty fighter, will open the door for them. And that means we shuffle up these five initiative cards and we deal out one to the Dungeon Master and one to each of the characters. But at the moment, we do not reveal those cards. Those are dealt out face down. Regdar opens the door. And now the Dungeon Master refers to the map to see what enemies and items are revealed. There is one doorway leading into an adjacent location. And we have found one goblin. On the back of this miniature, there is the number one. We are going to find a monster card with the matching number and we will place that card to the side of the board. The reason we have cards with matching numbers is because it makes it easier to track the monsters. When we move a monster, we can rotate the card with the matching number to indicate that that monster has already moved this turn. Furthermore, we can use the cards to track the hit points of the individual monsters. And now the Dungeon Master gets to place the monster anywhere, but of course at the moment we don't know the initiative order, so we don't know who's going to move first. The one thing I know I don't want to do is I don't want to place the goblin directly in front of the door, because the Elven Wizard is standing directly behind Regdar, and that means that Elven Wizard will have line of sight through the doorway, and would be able to cast her powerful magic missile spell if she chose to do so, so we want to place our goblin slightly to the side. We will place him there, that puts him out of line of sight of Jozan with his crossbow and the elf, forcing everybody to come into the room to meet him. We now reveal the initiative cards and the elven wizard is first to activate, so we were wise to move the goblin to the side. Each hero gets two actions, we're going to use our first action to move into the room. We're allowed to move through spaces with heroes, we're not allowed to move through spaces with monsters and also we're not allowed to move diagonally but we're going to sit there in the corner. We don't want to advance too far into the room in case there are some traps. We don't want to go standing on any traps right now. For our second action, we're going to attack the goblin. We could cast Magic Missile, but if I look at the initiative tracker, Jozan is going to go second, then Regdar will go third, and then the goblin, if it's still alive, will activate fourth. So I think we will be able to kill the goblin before it activates without having to waste valuable spell points on casting Magic Missile. So instead, Maella is going to use her bow. Looking at her bow, it says roll two yellow dice and the special black dice. If we roll a star symbol, we get one spell point back. Of course, we haven't spent any spell points yet, so that can be ignored. We roll to attack. And we have rolled a single sword. The goblin has an armor class of one, and that is deducted from the total number of hits you have rolled. So in this case, Maella has inflicted no damage on the goblin. Her turn is now over and Jozan will activate. He is going to step through the doorway and he is going to use his crossbow to attack the goblin. We move to there and then we refer to our crossbow card. We are rolling two yellow dice and the black dice and recovering a spell point when we roll a star. And again, we fail to cause any damage. This is not a good start. Furthermore, 
I have just looked at Regdar's movement value and Regdar only moves four spaces. And of course, we're not allowed to move diagonally. So Regdar, the fighter, can't even get into base contact with this goblin. So I've pretty much messed up this turn. I should have used Magic Missile right at the beginning. But never mind, let's get Regdar into the room. He's going to go there. He can't even use his second action to spot traps or anything like that because that is something that Lida can do. So unfortunately, we are wasting our second action for Regdar. Next, the Goblin will activate. Monsters get two actions. They can move and attack, attack and then move or move twice. And we have a movement value of five. That means we don't have enough movement points to get to the wizard, which would be our prime target. So instead, we're going to go and attack Jozan. Goblins roll two yellow dice and one orange dice, and Jozan has an armor class of two. That's a total of three hits, so Jozan does lose a hit point. He started with five, he has four remaining. Finally, we have to activate Lida. Lida has a movement value of six. Of course, our dungeon master would be constantly checking where we are stepping to make sure we haven't activated any traps. We're fine at the moment. Now we could use our second action to search for traps. I don't believe there's anything in the rules that prevents you from searching just because there are monsters present. However, we want to kill this goblin. So Lida is going to throw some balanced throwing daggers at this goblin. She can roll two yellow dice as a standard attack. If we wanted to, we could use a power attack instead, in which case we would roll two orange dice along with the black star dice. But if we roll the star symbol, then we lose the daggers for the rest of the adventure. I'm not prepared to do that until I have an alternative weapon for her to use. So we're just going to roll two yellow dice. And again, this goblin is truly blessed because it shrugs off that attack as well. We have now moved through the initiative order. All four heroes have activated and the dungeon master has activated. But that doesn't mean we reshuffle the initiative cards. The initiative order will stay in place until we open the next door. And that means we activate the elven wizard again. She has a bow, which is a ranged attack. You cannot attack enemies that are adjacent. However, in this game, diagonals don't count as adjacent. And that means she is able to use her bow to shoot the goblin. Let's do that first. And again, it's a big miss. So we're just going to use our second action to move out of the way to there. We could have moved further into the room, but we need to be a little bit cautious of traps, even in this very first location. Next up is Jozan. He also has a ranged attack, so he cannot attack from where he is because the goblin is adjacent. So we're just going to move into a position where we can attack. There is fine. But again, it's a miss. We're pretty much relying on Regdar at the moment to crack this goblin's skull. Regdar uses his first action to move adjacent, and for his second action he attacks with his broadsword. He is rolling one orange dice and he gets to add one to the result because he is a strong fighter. He rolls a one, we add one for his special ability giving us a total of two. We reduce that total by the goblin's armor class of one. We have inflicted a wound, but the goblin has another three. Honestly, these heroes are useless. And now the goblin, who is fourth in the initiative order, gets to retaliate. As we've already hit Jozan once, we're going to follow up and try and hit him again. With two yellow and one orange dice. This time we only roll two hits. Jozan has an armor class of two, so that's no damage this turn. It's Lida's turn, and while the goblin is preoccupied, we're going to use our first action to search the room for traps which means we roll the special search dice. We have rolled the hand symbol. That means not only have we not found any traps, we are not allowed to try and search again. That's not very good. But never mind. let's use our second action to attack the goblin with our throwing daggers. Line of sight is center of square to center of square, but heroes do not block line of sight for other heroes. And that means we can still throw a dagger at this goblin. But once again, the goblin shrugs off the attack. This is the toughest goblin sentry I have ever seen. It's now Maella's turn again. She's had enough of this nonsense. She's going to cast magic missile on the goblin. This spell costs two magic points to use and we will roll one yellow and one red dice. So it's very powerful. We do have to be careful casting spells like this though. Maella starts the game with only five spell points. Furthermore, as her spell points decrease, her armor value decreases as well. It starts at two, but once she drops to only two spell points, it goes down to one. And then once she goes down to zero spell points, her armor class is also reduced to zero. So casting spells really takes a lot out of her. And we want to do it only when we really have to. 
or when a goblin is really annoying us. And we have rolled four hits there. We take off the goblin's armor class of one. That leaves a total of three wounds. As we had already inflicted one wound on the goblin with Regdar, the goblin dies. That's why you don't annoy a wizard. So that goblin is removed from play and Myella has been reduced to three spell points. She has a second action, so she is just going to move into a position ready for when we open the next door. I will pop her there. Next, we activate Jozan. Jozan is going to use his first action to move. For his second action, he is going to heal himself because he took a wound from that goblin. He is going to spend one spell point to restore one hit point. That restores him to his maximum of five hit points while reducing his spell points to four. Remember, when he attacks with his crossbow, he does have that chance of restoring spell points. Next, Regdar is going to move to the door. And because there's no treasure in this room, because there are no monsters left, we might as well use our second action to open the door. That will reveal the next area of the map, and it will also force us to reshuffle the initiative cards. We flip the door token to the open side. We reveal another closed door. We reveal some fancy pillars. These block movement and line of sight. And we reveal two treasure chests. There are no monsters in this room. Nevertheless, we divvy up the initiative cards. The Dungeon Master actually received the first initiative card, so if there had been monsters in this room, they would have got the drop on the heroes and would have been able to attack immediately. But that is not the case. Myella is second in line, so she moves. Now, we have to be a bit cautious here. Myella has moved into the room and stood next to the pillar. There are treasure chests to get to, treasure chests to open, but we don't know if there are traps in this room. We don't know there may be some pit traps in front of those treasure chests. We have to be quite bold if we want to go and look at them. And unfortunately, Lidda the Rogue, the only character that can search for traps, is fifth in the initiative order. Next to move is Regdar. Only having a movement of four means he cannot get to a treasure chest. He's just going to advance into the room and cross his fingers. Next up is Jozan. Jozan with his movement of five also cannot reach a treasure chest. Now it is possible to do a double move in this game. You can move and then use your second action to move again. However, you cannot end your turn on a treasure chest unless you have a spare action to open the treasure chest. So we will just move there. We don't want to stand on any spaces next to the treasure chests just yet. We will rely on Lida moving into the room and doing a search instead. She moves to there for her first action, and for her second action, she will roll the special search die. We find nothing. That doesn't mean there's nothing there, it just means we haven't found anything. It now rolls around again to Myella's turn. And what the heck, we're going to throw caution to the wind. We want to keep this game moving, so Myella is going to go and stand on the treasure chest and search it. Fortunately, there were no traps. And now because we are searching this treasure chest, first the dungeon master will check the adventure guide to make sure there are no special items in there, and there is not. And then that being the case, the hero will draw the top card from the item deck. And we have found the ring of shadows. We can use this item to move anywhere in the room undetected, and then we roll a die. If we roll the star symbol, we have to discard the ring. Next up, Regdar is going to activate, and he's just going to move up to the next door. He's not going to open it yet, just in case there's some more monsters, but he wants to be ready. Next, Jozan is going to activate, and he knows that by following the path that Myella took, he's not going to stand on any traps, leaving him free to explore the second treasure chest. There are no special items, so he draws the top item card. And he has found a booby trap, the Choking Mist. A mist descends, making it difficult to breathe. All living creatures in the room lose one hit point. Well, that's not very good, but we should have suspected it when there's just some treasure chests lying around in an empty room. All of my heroes lose one hit point. Next up, it's time for Lida to activate. Because she didn't roll the hand symbol when she searched last turn, she can roll again. We reveal the eye symbol, which means we have to reveal the closest trap to her in this room. And there are no traps. So we know this room is completely devoid of traps, so we can use our second action to go and catch up with Regdar. Cycling through the initiative order again, Myella is going to move up to Regdar, and then Regdar will open the door, once again resetting the initiative order. I've just zoomed the camera out a bit so we can see this large room, and we're now going to populate it based on the Dungeon Master's map. And we have revealed a room with two treasure chests and two more goblins. Let's hope these ones cause us less difficulties than the last. And of course, we have to reveal our initiative order. It's going Rogue, Wizard, 
cleric fighter. And then the dungeon master last. The rogue activates first, she's going to move into the room and she's going to throw some daggers at one of these goblins. I'll put her there because that keeps her in a relatively safe position. Now, considering the difficulties we had with one goblin, I am very tempted to use my power attack with my balanced throwing daggers. If we remember, I can choose to do a power attack where I will be rolling two orange dice, but if I do that, I also have to roll the black dice, and if I roll a star symbol, I will lose the weapon. It's definitely a risk, as I don't have any other weapons the rogue could use, but the rogue does have a magical amulet that allows her to draw up to three treasure cards from the treasure deck, and there are two treasure chests in this room, so I have a pretty good chance of finding at least something she can use afterwards. So let's go for it and do a power attack. Well, the good news is we don't lose our dagger. The bad news is we only inflict a single wound on that goblin. The heroes are really struggling today. Next up, the wizard is going to move into the room and although I don't really want to, I'm going to have to cast magic missile again. Casting magic missile again will take me down to just one spell point and that means my armor class will go down to one. But I really would like to kill at least one of these goblins before they have a chance to retaliate. So I will move to there and I am casting magic missile on the same goblin we have already injured. And things really are going badly for us. We inflict just one more wound. The goblin has two wounds left and I am down to just one spell point. Jozan is next. He is going to move adjacent to the wizard and he is going to use his healing ability to restore her to five hit points. That will cost him one spell point. Next, Regdar is just going to blunder into the room. And he is going to stand there to ensure that no more than one goblin gets to attack the wizard. But unfortunately, one goblin can sneak into her, and that's exactly what's going to happen now when the dungeon master activates. We roll two yellow and one orange dice. And it's a big hit. With her armor class now only being one, she takes two wounds, putting her down to three. Our second goblin is going to charge in and attack the rogue, and there's a specific reason he's going to do that. Remember, each hero gets two actions and there's nothing stopping them from attacking twice. If one of my goblins is standing adjacent to Regdar when Regdar activates, he can hit them twice. So I don't want that to happen. As before, we roll two yellow dice and one orange dice. And it's another big hit. Our rogue loses another hit point. It's time to activate our rogue again. She is standing adjacent to a goblin, which means she cannot attack that goblin with her throwing daggers. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing in the rules that states you cannot shoot at a target further away just because there is a monster adjacent to you. So she's going to stand where she is and she is going to throw her daggers through the heroes at the goblin in the far corner. And we are going to risk another power attack because we want to kill at least one of these goblins. We have rolled three hits total, so that is two wounds on the goblin. Unfortunately, we did roll that star symbol, and that means we have lost our daggers, and we no longer have any way to attack. I think for our second action, we should just run away a bit. We're moving to there. We want to go and explore those treasure chests, and we have been lucky we haven't stood on any traps. Next up, we have our elven wizard, and she has found a special ring. This ring allows her to move anywhere in the room undetected. And we're going to do that. We're going to teleport out of danger and then we will shoot at one of the goblins with our bow. We're going to move all the way over to there. And we now need to roll the black dice to see if we get to keep our ring. We've rolled a blank. That means we do get to keep the ring. That's fantastic. And now we are going to shoot our bow. Both goblins have taken two wounds each, so it doesn't really matter which one we go for. We will go for the one that is closest to Jozan. We have completely missed with that attack, but we did roll the star symbol, which is fantastic because that means we get to recover one spell point. We're now on two spell points. If we can recover one more, our armor class goes back up to two. Jozan's going to do a double attack on his turn. He's going to attack the goblin that is diagonally adjacent to him, which he is allowed to do with his crossbow. Our first attack is amazing. We inflict one wound on the goblin. Furthermore, we roll the star, which means we get to recover one of our spell points too. Better yet, we can do it again. And unfortunately, we do not kill the goblin, but we do recover another spell point, putting us back up to our maximum of five. Come on, Regdar, kill a goblin for us. He rolls one orange dice and gets to add one to the result. He rolls one, 
That's a total of two. We take off the goblin's armor class of one. That is one wound and that is enough to kill it. These goblins sure are made of sterner stuff than the hero quest ones. The dungeon master now gets to activate the remaining goblin. The goblin can only reach Jozan, so that's who we will attack. As before, two yellow and one orange dice. And that is a massive hit. That's two wounds. Jozan is down to two hit points. Thank goodness we killed the other goblin. It's time for our rogue to activate. Our rogue does not have a weapon at the moment, so she's going to use her six movement points to go and explore one of these treasure chests. There are no special items according to the Dungeon Master's Guide, so we draw the top item card. And our bad luck continues. We have drawn the booby trap blinding light. We miss our next turn. Next up, our wizard activates. She has line of sight to the goblin, so she is going to use both of her actions to shoot her bow. If she can inflict two wounds, the goblin will die. That's a complete fluff with our first attack. That's better with our second. We inflict one wound. We also get a spell point back, which takes us back up to three, which means our armor class is now two again. Next, we activate Jozan. He has taken some serious damage. He has lost three wounds. So we are going to use our first action to heal. We're going to spend three spell points to restore ourselves to five hit points. And for our second action, we're going to move further into the room. And now we activate Regdar. Regdar's going to have to move because he cannot attack diagonally, but he is then going to hopefully kill this goblin. In fact, the goblin only has one wound left, so I think it's impossible for us to fail this. It's a big hit. We cause a total of two wounds, more than enough to kill the goblin, which means the dungeon master now has nothing to do on their turn. Next, we would activate our rogue, but she has been blinded by a booby trap, so she misses her turn. Good work, rogue. You had one job. Oh, and I should have mentioned this when the rogue opened the treasure chest last turn. She does have this special magical amulet that she starts the game with. And the way this amulet works is once you've drawn a card from a treasure chest, if you don't like it, you can discard it and draw again. And you can repeat that action up to three times. The problem is, if you draw a booby trap, then you have to action the booby trap. And as we drew a booby trap straight away, the amulet did not take effect. Never mind. To keep the game moving, our wizard is going to move onto the second treasure chest and search it. We draw the top card and we have found something really, really good. We have found the Blessed Bow of the Elves. This is much more powerful than our Bow of the Ancients we started the game with. It will be rolling a yellow and an orange dice instead of two yellow dice. We still get to get a spell point back if we roll a star, but also it has a special reroll symbol which allows us to reroll dice if we want to. Unfortunately, the wizard doesn't have a free hand to hold that at the moment, so it will go into her knapsack. Next turn, she will have to spend an action to take it from her knapsack and replace it with her currently active weapon. Next up, Jozan will activate. He has pretty much nothing he can do, because what he would really like to do is heal the elf, but he can't reach her this turn, so he's just going to stay exactly where he is. Meanwhile, Regdar will move to the door and open it. And yes, really, it would be beneficial for him to wait so that the other heroes can regroup and heal, but Fida's gonna fight. First, we reveal the contents of the room. Besides the door and a couple of pillars, there is nothing else in that room. And I can smell a trap. The new initiative order begins with Regdar, but he's a little bit dubious about this room. He is going to very cautiously step inside, but then he will wait for our rogue to come and explore. We're just going to move to there. Next up would be the DM's turn, but there are no monsters on the board. So we go straight to the wizard's turn. The wizard is going to do two things. She is going to give her short bow of the ancients to the rogue who she is standing adjacent to. Of course, the rogue doesn't make use of spell points, so the special ability to regain spell points will not benefit her at all, but at least now she will have a bow to use, having lost her daggers on the previous turn. And for the second action, our wizard is going to equip the blessed bow of the elves. That is so much more powerful than what she had before. Next up is Jozan's turn. He is also going to sneak into the room following the path that Regdar took so we are not going to stand on any traps. Finally, the rogue moves. She's going to do a double move to get into the room so that next turn she can do some searching. I will put her there on that side of the door. And we continue to be lucky. We haven't stood on anything bad yet. But we have a line of very nervous looking heroes expecting a chasm to open before them at any moment. They are so nervous, in fact, that Regdar is going to do absolutely nothing on his turn. He's just going to twiddle his thumbs and wait for someone more intelligent to do something more useful. Next, the wizard activates and does a double move. 
I will of course place her there next to Jozan, who is going to activate next, and he is going to use his heal ability on her. He has two spell points remaining. He is going to use them both to restore the wizard to the maximum five hit points. But that does mean our cleric is out of spell points now. He's going to have to start using his crossbow to try and recover some. Next up, Lida activates, and she is going to search for traps, so we roll the special trap dice. We have rolled the eye symbol, which means we have to reveal the closest trap, if indeed there are any traps. And indeed, there are traps in this room. We place the one that is closest to where the rogue is standing, which is right there. Now, at the moment, we don't know what that trap is. We just know it's there. We can attempt to disable that trap on a subsequent turn if we want to. For now, we're going to roll the search dice a second time, just to see if we can find anything else. And we have rolled the eye symbol again. Now, as I understand it, once you have revealed a trap, you would reveal the next closest trap. So we have to look at the map and figure out what the next closest trap would be, if indeed there are any. And of course there is. It is right there in front of Regdar. He was just inches away from danger. It is now Regdar's turn to activate. He could continue waiting just to see if the rogue finds anything else, but... We're going to risk moving on. We're going to move towards the door. We're not going to open it yet. We're just going to get ready. Now we know that that route that Regdar has taken to the door is safe. The wizard is going to follow him. Then Jozan will do likewise. It's now the rogue's turn and the rogue has an interesting ability. If she successfully disables three traps, she recovers two hit points. So you're putting yourself in danger by standing on the traps to disable them, but there is a potential that you will recover wounds if you do it. At this point, I probably think it's a better idea not to get her in danger, but just to illustrate how disabling traps works, we're going to do it anyway. For her first action, she moves on to the trap token, and for her second action, she rolls the special disable traps dice. And we have rolled the success symbol, so we have successfully disabled that trap and we can remove it from the board. We flip the token over, and we place it on our rogue's character sheet. Every time she collects three, she gets two hit points back. It's just a nice way to encourage the rogue to do what the rogue should do, rather than just constantly moving around the traps once you've found them. It's now Regdar's turn again. He's going to open the door. As always, we start by flipping the door token. And we have revealed a room packed with treasure. There are six treasure chests, but unfortunately there are three goblins. And this is an interesting thing to note. Our objective for this mission is killing all of the goblins. This is the last room, and that means these three goblins are the last ones. And the way this game works, as soon as you complete the objective, the game ends. You don't get an opportunity to open any treasure chests after that point. If you haven't opened up the treasure chest before you complete the objective, then tough, you've missed out. So what we have to do in this room is carefully balance killing the goblins against opening the treasure chests. Focus too much on the treasure chests, the goblins will kill us. Focus too much on killing the goblins, we miss out on all that lovely loot. So bearing that in mind, let's crack some skulls. The initiative cards are dealt out, Regdar will go first, then Lida the rogue, then the wizard will activate, then the dungeon master, and finally Jozan. Regdar is of course going to do what Regdar does best. He is going to attempt to kill a goblin. He's going to stand there between the two. He rolls his orange dice and adds one to the result. We are attacking the goblin directly to the north of us. We've only rolled one. With our plus one to hit, we have only inflicted a single wound. Not a great start. Next up, Lida will activate, and she actually has a line of sight to the same goblin that Regdar just attacked, because she can draw line of sight through the wizard and through the open door on a diagonal. Remember, she now has this short bow of the ancients. That's one hit, that's one wound, and we will go again. And that's another hit, that goblin has one wound remaining. It's a real shame Regdar hadn't done better. Next up, our wizard activates, and she's going to use her brand new bow, which allows her to roll one yellow dice, one orange dice, and the black dice, and she gets a re-roll. And of course, we're shooting at the same goblin again. And that's a big hit. That's another two wounds. The goblin dies. Our wizard has a second action. She has a movement. She is going to use it just to enter the room and go to the top corner. 
she's going to stand up there. She isn't allowed to end her move on that treasure chest, otherwise she would. Fourth in initiative order is the Dungeon Master, so we are going to activate our goblins. The first one will go and attack the wizard, rolling two yellow and an orange. And fortunately, because we increased our spell points to three, we have an armor class of two again, and we deflect that attack. The second goblin, for want of something better to do, is going to attack Regdar. And his attack is also deflected. This is much better from the heroes. Jozan is last to activate. He has no spell points to heal anybody. He isn't really very good in a fight. So we're going to use our five movement points to move onto a treasure chest and explore it. We move to there and we draw the top item card. And we have found a potion of cure light wounds. Drink this to revive your strength, restoring three hit points. That's fantastic. And as that's a potion, that goes directly into our knapsack. We can use that from the knapsack without having to spend an action moving it into our hand. Okay, it's time for Regdar to activate again. He's adjacent to a goblin. He can spend both of his actions attacking. His first attack inflicts a single wound. And his second attack inflicts a second wound. The goblin has two wounds remaining. Not great, Regdar. Next to activate is our rogue. She has a movement of six, which is just enough to get to another treasure chest. So we will move on to the treasure chest and explore it, I think. She moves to there and she draws the top treasure card. We have found the potion of greater restoration. Bring a hero back from the dead. Stand next to a hero to restore them. We could, if we wanted to, discard this card and draw a replacement, but we're not going to. We're going to keep that because that's pretty awesome. Next to activate is the wizard. And once again, she is going to use her Ring of Shadows to teleport across the room. We can place her anywhere we want in the room, but then we roll the special dice to see if we get to keep the ring. I'll just move here down to the bottom of the room. Of course, the Dungeon Master is constantly checking while we're doing things like this to make sure we're not standing on traps. We roll to see if we keep the ring. And we do, that's fantastic. And we have a choice for our second action. We could use our bow, which would roll a yellow and an orange. The maximum damage output from that is three. We do get a reroll. Alternatively, we can spend two spell points to use magic missile, which rolls a yellow and a red. The maximum damage output there is four. So we're going to do magic missile and hope we score at least three hits, which will be enough to kill the goblin. And it is a complete disaster. We have rolled only one hit. The goblin shrugs off the attack. Our armor class is reduced to one because we only have one spell point left. And there are still two goblins on the board, both of which are now going to activate. The first goblin at the top of the board is going to attack the rogue. And it's a massive hit. That's four hits. That takes her down to just one hit point remaining. So naturally, the second goblin is going to attack her as well. And that is another three hits. That is enough to kill Lydda. She is knocked down and removed from the board. In her place, we put a little token with her symbol on it that indicates where she has fallen. Now, if Jozan had four spell points, he could use them to revive her, to bring her back into the fight. But at the moment, he doesn't have any spell points because he's spent them all healing people which means there's a very good chance that she will be dead at the end of the adventure. If that's the case, she will lose any items she has acquired in this adventure, so she will lose her potion, and she will also have to give up the short bow of the ancients that was given to her by the wizard. But she will get to come back in the next adventure with her basic starting items. But maybe we can find something in one of these treasure chests that will help us. Regardless, we have learned a valuable lesson not to take anything for granted, even when fighting goblins. Regdar sees red. He moves to there and uses his second action to attack. Again, he only rolls a one. That's only one wound. The goblin is still standing. You massive oaf. Next up to activate would be the rogue. So she just bleeds out a little bit. And now it's time for the wizard to activate. This time she is going to use her bow. She needs to inflict a single wound on one of those goblins to kill it. She rolls two hits, which is just enough. She kills the second goblin, one to go. She does have a second action to take. She does have line of sight to the second goblin, so she may as well take another shot. But it's a miss this time. The goblin activates and decides to go and attack Jozan. But the attack is deflected. 
Why couldn't our rogue do that? Jozan's going to spend his first action to move across the room. He can't quite get to a treasure chest, but he's going to head that way. And he'll use his second action to shoot. So we'll just stand there. And then we roll our two yellow dice and our special black dice. We do not inflict any damage, but we do recover a spell point. That's pretty important. Next, Regdar will activate, and he might as well go up to the top treasure chest and search it. We draw the top card from the deck, and we have found a scroll containing the spell Force Cage. This is a pretty powerful spell. It can be used by either the wizard or by the cleric. It rolls one yellow, one orange, one red dice, and the black dice. And if you roll the star symbol, you trap the monster, forcing it to miss its next turn. Of course, Regdar cannot use that spell, so it goes in his knapsack. He will have to hand it to somebody else at the end of the adventure. Next up, our wizard activates. She still has her bow. She's going to shoot at the goblin. We want to recover some more spell points so we get our armor class back up. We take our first shot. That's two hits and the star symbol. So first of all, we recover one of our spell points, which is great. And second, we do get to pick one of these dice to re-roll if we want to. So we will, of course, re-roll that yellow dice. So that's a total of three hits on the goblin. We reduce it by the armor class of one, so two wounds on that goblin now. And we do get a second attack. If we kill the goblin, we miss out on three treasure chests, but we haven't done too badly for loot in this particular game. We inflict another wound on the goblin, so the goblin has one wound left. We also recover another spell point, so our armor class goes back to two. That's fine by me because it means the goblin is still alive and I get another turn to loot treasure chests. Of course, I could, if I had wanted to, re-roll the orange dice, potentially killing the goblin completely. But that goblin will now activate and it might as well try and attack our wizard. He's just scurrying around the edge of the room. It's a big hit. It's the biggest hit a goblin can cause. That's two wounds on the wizard. But Jozan will step onto the treasure chest adjacent to him and open it. Again, we draw the top card from the deck, and we have found the Master's Axe. It does one yellow and one orange attack as standard, but it also has a special power attack, which will allow us to roll an additional orange dice. And that goes in our knapsack. Next is Regdar. He cannot reach the goblin, so he may as well search the treasure chest instead. One more card from the deck. And this was well worth doing. We have found something awesome. We have found the Hammer of Liberty. It protects from paralysis when in use and rolls two orange dice. That's going to be massive for Regdar. He's going to be able to do so much more damage with that. And because he's allowed to hold two weapons at the same time, we can equip that immediately. It's now the wizard's go. We're going to move away from the goblin and then we're going to attack it with our bow. We do have enough spell points. We could cast magic missile instead. But if we do that, our armor class will once again drop to one and the goblin can potentially inflict three wounds on us in a single turn if our armor class is one. As we only have three wounds remaining, we don't want to risk that. We have already lost a rogue. We don't want to lose a wizard too. We roll to attack. And we have rolled three hits. That is enough to kill the final goblin. The goblin is removed from the board and the mission ends. Congratulations, you have defeated the goblin bandits, but as the heroes search their lair, they find a disturbing message. It seems the goblins were just scouts for a larger party, but where is this other group? And where is the sheriff? And that is it. That is the end of the first adventure from the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy adventure board game. We struggled a little bit there at the beginning. It wasn't a bad end. We did lose the rogue, which means we also lost all the items she was carrying, but she will return for the next mission with her starting basic items. And at least we did find a much better weapon for Regdar. We have that hammer, which does double the damage that our sword did. And we have found a powerful new spell, which we can give to our wizard. So that's not too bad overall. I think from this playthrough, you can see that the enemies in this game are significantly tougher than the enemies in Hero Quest. We only met goblins here, and we only met six of them in total, and yet we still lost one of the party. Furthermore, the wizard was very badly injured as well. And even our mighty fighter really struggled to inflict any serious damage. And we didn't even have to deal with many traps in this mission. But I think this video has been going on for long enough. I hope you have enjoyed this look at Dungeons & Dragons, the fantasy adventure board game. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.
Bye-bye.